Hey everybody, welcome back to Mjolnir. This episode is going to focus most of all on the natural setting of the coaster, so we're going to get into a lot of terraforming, a lot of foliage, and many smaller details to make this coaster as nice and realistic as possible. Which also means that about three-fourths of this video is pretty much just the stuff that I've been doing only in a very small part of the last video, just to be able to finish that natural setting. Uh, but the very last part of this video, I'll get into some of the earlier path work, kind of see how I want that to look like and how that's going to work out with the rest of the environment and the station in the future. And we're going to build a wooden uh, or a stone bridge, which I'm actually really happy with and I think actually shows off very well how you can use all of these smaller pieces in the game and put them together in so many different ways to come up with your own creative things that are completely different from the uses that were originally intended in the game and um, hopefully that should just kind of show off how flexible really the many scenery items in this game are. Anyway there is a lot that I want to talk about that isn't directly related to some of the scenery and some of the rock work that I'll be doing in this episode since that's already quite similar to what I've been doing in the last episode and while I do want to you know, keep explaining here and there uh, what the things that I'm doing are, why I want to do them, and pretty much just uh, what I'm up to. Um, there are a couple of things that I sort of want to come back to based on the comments of the last video. Uh, now very quickly, I just wanted to put this quick meadow over here since I got a few comments about if I wanted to leave this coaster entirely open or actually have some grasslands in there as well. Well, the answer to that is really, it's going to be mostly a forest since it really has that uh, very northern... Um, well, Nordic style to it. So it's mostly going to be a forest, but I don't want to have too much foliage. I think it's hard to notice the details if you don't have areas that aren't as detailed. Uh, so some areas will be a little bit open and just to give them a little bit of variety and things to look at and make them look a little bit nicer. I figured I would fill these little grass areas with some smaller rocks, very small bushes here and there and um, some of the western bushes to create the illusion of small grass patches just to um, make it look a bit more interesting than a completely empty area but some of these parts as the part right here are going to be uh, just grass instead of a complete forest everywhere some of the reasons are also that i want to keep some sight lines inside the coaster kind of intact so the little area of grass over here is like, actually right next to the drop of the coaster and I really just wanted to preserve that side of the drop so that at some point in the future, uh, while you're in the coaster itself, you can actually see the drop as you're moving toward it. Or uh, it also gives a very nice camera angle to take a picture or a shot of the drop. So I wanted to keep that very empty. So there will be quite a variety of open parts and forest parts, but the majority will really be forest. And the same goes for the tops of all of these hills because the idea is really that it's it's sort of in this valley with a river but the surrounding hills are very gentle and pretty much just forest the only steep rocky cliffs are right here next to the river where the coaster kind of moves along them and so these are really the only parts where i don't have trees so i feel pretty safe putting all of these trees on top of the rocks because these aren't actually going to be very pointy rocky mountain parts but really just places where the hills have eroded and where there's just a vertical cliff right in the middle of the hills and right in the middle of the forest. So that's really how that's going to work out. And much of this area is sort of um, in line with that. So we have the trees and the forests on the bottom here next to the river and then we'll have some foresty parts on top of the hill, uh, which also encloses the coaster quite nicely. It's a pretty good way to sort of make the rest of the world in the game invisible. Because obviously I don't really want the endless flat grassland of the sandbox map to be visible from the coaster itself. And having these large cliff canyons around it works pretty well to block out the sight of the rest of the world. Also, very quickly, I just wanted to get back to that. Uh, because I just did it right now. One of the things which I wanted to do quite a lot in here is mix all of the different textures uh, together. I said in the last episode that I'm actually really happy with how the textures blend together. And I think it gives you a much larger palette than what the game itself gives you. You only have eight textures from the game itself, but you can mix all of these different textures together to make some darker grass or make some grass that looks like it has some gravel or pebbles in it. And especially the, the dark uh, brownish soil, the sand and the grass 
mixed together really well and just by kind of spreading them out unevenly you get this idea that um, the texture of the grass isn't completely the same everywhere and you can sort of put some sand and rubble underneath the cliffy canyons so that's a thing that I've been doing a lot around these rocks. I think the important thing of these rocks is actually not the textures on the rocks themselves because they're actually just the same for everything. I just took the pretty simple in-game standard rock texture. I think actually what's important with these things is kind of shading them with different textures around them. So on top of them I have the uh, kind of mossy grass. I'm not sure if it's actually moss or if it's really grass but on top of them I have that little outline of very bright grass to sort of outline where the grass is going to stop and where the cliff just suddenly starts. And some of the spots on the rocks also have that sort of brownish soil texture to them, makes them a little bit darker and makes them a little bit more brown, which I also figured would be quite nice because otherwise this entire scene doesn't really have a lot of brown colors, but I did want to give a sort of slight brownish hint into it. And there's also a lot of sand to sort of mark where the rock is going to stop and where the rest of the grass is just going to go on. So a lot of these textures with the rocks is also around, uh, centered around what textures you have around them. I didn't want it to be just simply rocks and grass, but really just sort of blend the rocks into the grass with these different sand and soil textures. Anyway, this is just another section where I'm pretty much the same. And this is probably where it's going to get a bit boring because here you can kind of see the, form the formula popping up where I do just about the same thing everywhere, just with different shapes and slightly different textures. Um, so what I actually wanted to come back for a second here is the coaster itself. I've seen quite a few comments um, asking what an RMC is, and I am sorry about not explaining that in the last video. I suppose there's this thing that coaster enthusiasts always talk about their own jargon, but it's pretty much unknown to anybody else. Kind of similar to this weird urban legend that Eskimos have about a hundred words for snow, I think coaster enthusiasts have hundreds of words for different types of coasters and inversions that you normally don't ever hear. So basically what an RMC is, is the company which creates these kinds of wooden roller coasters. And what makes them so unique is that they only started making these things a couple of years ago. And they're vastly different from other types of wooden roller coasters. In the case of this type, Regular wooden roller coasters have sort of wooden rails and just have one metal strip on top of them which the top wheels are going to run on. In this coaster, they actually the rails are actually kind of half wood and on top of that there's a large metal bar. Uh, so there's much more metal in the rail of this coaster and generally I'm not an expert on how exactly it works or how they put the rails together but it just means that the coaster is much more flexible and you can bend the rails in so many different ways. They're a lot more smoother, um, more smoother, good job. Um, but it basically, these coasters are entirely different from regular wooden coasters, I would say, in that they have steeper drops, they have much tighter turns, they usually have inversions, and um, they're pretty popular and often more intense than regular wooden roller coasters as well. And in this sense, the company has sort of revolutionized wooden roller coasters recently, and that's why I want to mention this specifically, because this coaster would not make sense as any wooden coaster other than one that would be made by RMC. And in this case, it's specifically confusing because the trains on the coaster are not actually RMC trains. The trains are regular wooden coaster trains from Gravity Group, which are kind of like Millennium Flyers, since they have just two cars. That's a lot to talk about, but basically, the trains are regular wooden coaster trains, while the rails of this coaster are the so-called topper track RMC rails, which allow for all of these inversions and tight curves, which makes everything a bit more confusing and why I wanted to specifically say what kind of coaster I'm going for here. So that's pretty much the background story. What I want to add to that is that I actually have a tutorial series in the works. I've been getting a lot of comments um, asking if I wanted to make some tutorials about how to make certain types of coasters or even certain things of scenery. So I am currently planning to start a series called Planet Coaster College in which I'll go through all of these things and make tutorials about the game in terms of how you can make realistic and nice parks and show my ways of working and give you some tips. That's basically what I am thinking about doing. Uh, so please leave a comment if you're interested in that or um, have some ideas about what kind of tutorials I can make 
because I'm putting everything together in the Google Docs right now and kind of figuring out what kind of videos I'm gonna make and making a video about the different types of wooden roller coasters, what the difference is between them and how to make them is one that's pretty much the highest on my list right now. Anyway, to get back on topic, I just finished the bunch of fo uh, foliage on top of the hill, which I have to say, some of this foliage is not realistic at all, uh, especially around the outer edges. It's a lot more tight than um, it should have been, as in it's a lot more dense than it probably should realistically be. And I guess this is really just something which I picked up as a habit playing Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 to achieve sort of the maximum uh, forest look with a minimum amount of trees. Uh, so what at this point I am doing around the parameters of the coaster is put together a tree line where you put trees like very tightly together so that you can't actually see through the trees and that way you can make a very narrow line of trees that looks like an enormous very dense forest that you can't see through. Which saves some time and it saves especially some frames per second as well since you don't have to put quite as many trees together as say making a real forest outside the coaster, uh, which is why I'm doing it in this case. Uh, but it's mostly built to look realistic from the perspective of the coaster itself, but as soon as you go to the back of these things you're just gonna see a very unfinished and unrealistic looking uh, forest. So that's something that, you know, I sometimes would give as a tip. It kind of depends on whether you want your forest to uh, just look realistic from the certain camera angles that you want to look at it from or whether you really want to make a realistic forest. And in the second case, I wouldn't really recommend trying to make these tree lines. But in the first case, I quite like making them because they look pretty good. They're easy to make. They save some time and some frame rates. And generally, it doesn't result as much as a mess. Now then, into the second half of the video, which is pretty interesting since we're going to make the final rock. Yes, this is going to be just about it for all of the rock work. I'll be finishing off the rest of the um, of the area which is still empty with just simple trees so we don't have to go through any more of this terraforming after this. And I'm actually quite happy with how this one looks. I wanted to make sure that this one looked as realistic as I could since this is going to be mostly bare. There's the helix in front of this which is why I don't want to put trees right in front of this rock. There's also going to be the entry path into what is going to be like this small coaster area. I guess in a fantasy sense this coaster could be placed somewhere in um, a park very similar to Kolmarden actually in Sweden where it's sort of tucked away at the back of a smaller park which doesn't have as many attractions or is maybe also partly a zoo or aquarium, that kind of thing. It's basically not really smack dab in the middle of a theme park but just kind of in a more natural uh, quiet corner. Um, though in a sense I guess it's not so quiet with this coaster but that's really the idea, um, and that's also why it's pretty much just surrounded by hills and stuff, and why I needed to get this sort of entry path, which is just going to be this little picturesque road through the natural environment here, and um, that means that the entire rock basically is going to be all open and exposed, and I can't put any foliage in front of it. And also it's going to be a pretty important like thing that you see everywhere, because you're going to see this rock quite a bit if you're walking over the path or if you're in the coaster or if you're standing next to the station you're gonna sort of see this rock peak up um, above the forest so um that's really the idea you'll see that coming together in a minute as i put some of the simple rocks and foliage on top of this thing i wasn't really too sure if i wanted to put rocks like everywhere since it's not the most realistic thing, I, I originally wanted to put these rocks just underneath um, the rocky cliffs, because that's really just where you'd see them, and the river, since the river just usually drops them off. But in the end, I figured I could have them sort of scattered throughout these little grassy areas in a sort of mountain top sense, kind of like you see on many of these very high valleys in the Alps. Um, and I suppose many of these uh, Scandinavian forests also have rocks scattered throughout, so at the end I just figured, whatever, YOLO, we're just gonna put rocks everywhere. And that's pretty much where I end up with this. And I also wanted to put this grass everywhere. I think in hindsight this was pretty much the biggest contributor to the lag in this park, since at this point I already have so much foliage that it's running at about 30 FPS. 
a little bit under it every now and then and there is this crazy amount of little bushes and trees that I sunk into the ground just to make the smallest of details which is not really the most useful thing to do but in this case it's just one coaster I'm not gonna expand this anymore so I'm pretty fine with um, putting that many polies in there as long as I don't create this endless forest with many trees and bushes that uh, go out of the line of sight of the coaster itself. And at this point I think it's really sort of coming together. Actually I think the most important thing in the entire look of this of this build is the way that the, the terrain textures and the rocks and the grass work together. I don't think the trees are even that necessary. The trees just kind of block out the rest of the world and make sure that it all comes together a little bit but especially the combination of the way that the terrain textures the rocks and the the small grass patches uh, look together I think is um, what really makes this this theme and custom biome almost if you will work and I was thinking about taking the in-game uh, pines which are also used on the outside of the map here which are the very blue-ish pines but in the end I kind of like this more since it has a more red-ish tint to it, I like the textures of these trees a bit more. So that's why I ended up using those. Anyway, into what is one of my favorite parts of this video. Probably my favorite part, making the stone bridge. I was thinking for a little bit that I could actually make this bridge out of wall pieces. But what I wanted to go for here is one of these really old bridges. That are just made up of different rocks that are sort of just glued together um, in, an, in, a, in a sort of general arc of bridge shape but not really 100% and it's still looking quite natural since it is just a bunch of rocks put together and um, first I just kind of put these wooden posts here as a general guide of where the arch is gonna go and uh, where the pillars and the side of the bridge are gonna be and after that I wanted to make this ridge with the small rocks um, and later I tried filling it in with some larger rocks, didn't really end up looking that good since the rocks were much larger than the rocks that I used to make the ridge for the arch here. So I figured for a little bit that I could actually put some walls above that, but in the end I decided to put some smaller rocks on the side here, um, as well as some um, very small rocks that fill in the gaps between these different rocks, and that should just about finish the look of the bridge. I was mostly concerned with this ending up like a bunch of rocks that don't really fit together because I did want to make it look as flat as possible, kind of like how in real life you would look for the most flat and useful shapes of rocks that you can find. Um, but in the end actually the shapes of rocks that the, games come, that the game comes with were actually super handy, a lot more handy than I expected beforehand and I think you can actually make some really cool stuff out of this, use it as foundations for buildings or for castles or that kind of stuff. They work really well together. But for now I just wanted to make this simple bridge as a kind of concept test to see how well this would actually work. In the end I just copied over this side to the other side because honestly I couldn't be bothered to do all of that again. It does take quite a bit of time to put the rocks together nicely. Um, and in the end also just blending it together with some larger rocks and some foliage around it felt a little bit easier and like it would fit a little bit better into the surrounding area than finishing the bridge in a very fancy way. So this is also just kind of putting stuff together as a way to support the bridge. Actually, and call me stupid if you will, but these pebbles are one of my favorite things that have been added into the recent updates. They're just this very minute detail which you don't really notice that much, it doesn't really make any kind of difference on how the park looks in general, but it's it's something that just makes it look a little bit more realistic. It's just that little touch that, you know, oh, they thought about pebbles, and you can actually see these little rocks scattered around the riverbed and underneath the cliffs, and it's just that little touch of detail which I really like in it. The same probably goes for the doves which have been added into the recent updates, I don't think I've really seen any so far in the time lapse, but I definitely saw some popping up while I was playing the game, and I think that could actually be very interesting as you're uh, recording some coaster POVs or recording some off-ride shots as well. I guess the only thing that's missing at this point, kind of like the uh, the ducks in Roller Coaster Game 3, is that you can pluck them, um, but that would be mean-spirited, of course. But that's what these games are all about in the end. I mean, I'm one of the few people probably trying to make things nice instead of just killing everyone in the park. 
Anyway, that's it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching and I'll leave you with a couple of cinematic shots again.